Friday, Saturday night. My colleagues, and what a delight for me, Kirk Herbstreit, one of the stars at game day. He made it up here. And, of course, the one time Notre Dame coach Bob Davey. Gentlemen, it's going to be a great season. Yeah, Kirk, let me start with you yeah. because you were very high on the Irish today. You think they go all the way to the national championship. Well, I think this team has a shot to get to the national title. They've got great experience in key areas. Brady Quinn, of course, I think is the number one pro prospect in all of college football. He needs to get off to a good start against a pressing Georgia Tech defense. Quinn's the key. Uh, but, Bob, we got to hold everybody up tonight, Georgia Tech. You covered a couple of games last year, huge upsets for Georgia Tech. Brent, I saw Georgia Tech play twice last year in person. I saw them beat Auburn at Auburn. I saw them beat Miami at Miami. They are capable of the upset tonight if they follow a simple plan, get the ball to number 21, Calvin Johnson. At six foot five, 230 pounds, he is the best wide receiver in the country of just going up over the top of defenders and making plays on the ball. Well, who will be invincible tonight? Will it be Brady Quinn or will it be Calvin Johnson? We're about to find out. Chan Gailey on the other side, the fifth season here, four straight, seven win seasons. And as Bob Daly told you, last year, huge upsets against Auburn and Miami. Mohammed Yahiawi with the ball on the tee will kick it off. And that was George West, a freshman, along with David Grimes, one of their wide receivers. So one of the freshmen, the Valley Hoot freshman class, one of the reasons why folks like the Notre Dame future so much is the recruiting that this coaching staff did. And one of the youngsters is back to return right now, George West. underway in Atlanta and it's fielded on the 12 by the freshman huge gap he's got some speed down at the 45 yard line where the Irish will have a first and 10 and Kirk they bring out their great quarterback Brady Quinn well, Brent, the last thing you want to do early in a game is give Brady Quinn great field position, almost up to midfield. Brady's making his 34th career start. What makes this guy, in my mind, the number one prospect for the NFL is his experience, along with his preparation. He's ready to go and see this blitzing defense from Georgia Tech. And uh, Bob and Kirk, a homecoming for the tailback, number three, Darius Walker. Charlie Weiss always scripts the game, and he gives the Atlanta youngster the first call. And he bangs his way to the 48-yard line. Now, folks, our starting lineups presented by City. So many stories, but let's focus on this one. Sam Young is the first freshman to start the opening game of the season for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. He's 6'8", number 74. You see him right there as he brings him out. And they give him tight end coverage over there with John Carlson to help him on that side. They know he'll be tested. Play fake, and here's Quinn's first pass of the game. They put it in Walker's hand, short of the first down as he comes across midfield. And Philip Wheeler, a very active linebacker, as City now brings you the Georgia Tech defense. All right, folks. Joe Anawaii, number 96, the son of a professional wrestler. They're going to switch him over to defensive end to test the freshman. You know, just, Bob, just kind of welcoming to a college football. Give him a little taste of major college football, right? <laughs> Here's your first third down now for Quinn and the Irish. Samarja in motion. They snap it to him, and they've got the first down as he goes down quickly for the ball, but he crossed the yellow line, indicating the first and ten for Notre Dame, Kirk. Well, here's one of these things when you're going to sit your corners back on third and short. Brady Quinn is knowledgeable enough to know that his best receiver is Jeff Samarja. And coach, with a soft corner like that on third and short, that's pitch and catch. Very easy for them to execute that on third down. One thing you're going to see is the quick three-step drop. Brady Quinn getting rid of that ball against that blitz. Will he stay in the slot? They're going to throw to him in behind the block by Raymond McKnight. Freeze him. And there's a penalty flag on the play. He's driven out of bounds by safety D.J. Jones. But there's a penalty flag back at the 38-yard line. And Weiss unhappy with this. And Dan K. 
Capron. He's the referee for this Big Ten crew. He'll explain what happened. Holding. Number five on the offense. Ten-yard penalty is enforced from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. That's Notre Dame. I'm sorry, Brent. Notre Dame calls that a look pass, and it didn't it didn't work here, but it just gives you an idea of the, the experience this year with Brady Quinn with his soft corner there. Gives it to him that gives him the option there to throw the pass. And Kirk, a great look at Coach Weiss. Not a happy camper on that call. He thought that nice block was perfectly legal. He had a pretty good view. First down and 15. Short drop. Quinn couldn't find anybody open. And there's that defense, Bob David. And what you see, Brett, penalties. Penalties change the momentum of a football team, particularly change the momentum of an offense. And I think that's what Georgia Tech has to do. Create negative plays to make Charlie Weiss predictable Kirk in his play calling. And anytime it's second down and about 16 yards to go, you become pretty predictable. And with John Tenuta as defensive coordinator, he's going to bring a multiple amount of blitzes early in this game to show Charlie Weiss he's not intimidated by his play calling he's going to be very aggressive on defense four wide outs here's Samaja behind the tight end Carlson who had flexed out well short of the first down this is going to be third and long for Weiss and the Irish Again, looks like this time he has that soft corner he has the option here to try to get the ball out to his receiver but on second long you got to wonder whether or not that was a good decision by Brady Quinn when we take a look at John Tenuta Georgia Tech's defensive coordinator whenever you play Notre Dame Brent it creates a big stage and big opportunities for everyone trust me this is a huge <laughs> game for John Tenuta he's, he's been looking forward to this one for a long time and a timeout's going to be called by Notre Dame. Quinn and Weiss are going to talk about this. And I think you can read lips. They did not have the personnel that Charlie wanted on the field for that. And they'll get it straightened out by the time we come back. Third down and 12 yards for Notre Dame. Two tight ends. Marcus Freeman has joined John Carlson. Penalty flag is thrown by the linesman on the snap. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 74 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. There's the freshman, Kirk. There's the young freshman feeling the energy of this crowd, not being able to hear his quarterback and rocking back in his stance. Can expect the nerves for a true freshman starting in his first game for the Irish. And even though it's third and 17, Georgia Tech with three new starters, Brent, in that secondary. Look for Notre Dame to maximum protect and throw that ball down the field. Raymond McKnight is to the short side, back from the injury of a year ago. Three receivers to the left, and Quinn moves the pocket in that direction, fires hard and incomplete. And very good coverage by Kenny Scott, the senior from Daytona Beach, Florida. And the Irish drive after that 33-yard kickoff return stalls, and they will be punted. Guys, that is incredibly, incredibly huge for this Georgia Tech team. In the first series, at home as an underdog with everybody expecting Notre Dame and Charlie Weiss and Brady Quinn to put up points tonight, to get a stop and to force a punt, especially after the big return, is huge for the confidence of this team. And here's Jeff Price. New kicking game for Notre Dame. Price has a big leg. They like to bury this one. There's another penalty. Penalty flag was thrown at midfield. Prior to the snap, full start. Number 47. Five, still fourth down. And you go to the holding penalty. Samarja, so important for Georgia Tech. What it did, it got this crowd back in this ball game early because Notre Dame had momentum up until that point. Huge holding penalty on Jeff Samarja. Mitchell Thomas was guilty that time. The Irish right now early on self-destructing a bit. Fourth down and 22. Pat Clark back deep for Georgia Tech. He fields it at the 11-yard line. 
to the 25 yard line and uh, Bob here's what we see now a senior Reggie Ball will bring the offense out for Georgia Tech and Brett Reggie Ball has started 36 games as the quarterback at Georgia Tech he's seen it all the Georgia Tech fans know him we know him the bottom line he's really talented he's going to make some great plays the key and it's been this way the last couple of years can he keep from making the big mistake now a brand new play caller Patrick Nix has taken over for head coach Chan Gator we're going to ask Bob about that right after we see this offensive lineup on first down he puts it in the hands of the big fella remember now Bob Davey has told you Calvin Johnson and there's his first catch now let's take a look at this starting lineup presented by City underrated overlooked number 22 Shachard to shard choice remember now recruited by Bob Stoops at Oklahoma was behind Adrian Peterson mother became injured moved back to Georgia played last year he's a good looking ball control running back he'll show you a little cut in the hole here's his first carry got the daylight barges upfield and with a nice run on his first carry now the city Notre Dame defense remember they were embarrassed last year in the Fiesta Bowl something to prove and Travis Thomas was moved in the spring from running back to linebacker to try and give this Irish defense a little more speed. Now, Bob, go ahead and tell us about Patrick Nix calling plays. This is probably bucked right straight here for a first down. I think it helps Georgia Tech. I think it helps Reggie Ball. Patrick Nix has been his quarterback coach for four years. They have a great relationship, Brent, a great trust. Reggie goes right straight ahead for the, for the first down. Bob, what did you see on that first series? They hit the big receiver that you said they had to do they use choice ball what did you see I see that Patrick Nix the new offensive coordinator is a smart guy he takes coaching well get the ball to number 21 Calvin Johnson Calvin Johnson only two catches last year Brent in their last two games they lost both games get it to 21 that's the first thing yeah, I talked to Patrick Nix, Nix this week and he said you know the big thing is I have to show a bunch of formations early in the first half see how they're going to react to Calvin Johnson are they going to use two defenders to take him away because then I can go with my game plan and try to get other people involved to make plays the running game and James Johnson on the other side well, right now they've got him single Ambrose Wooden near the bottom of your screen now but they're going to give him safety help immediately Reggie rolls in that direction throws in underneath to the receiver Dunlap working the third man and Kirk that was a beautifully executed and schemed play right there well that's it it's exactly what Patrick Nix right now is looking at right at the bottom of the screen Wooden is going to spend too much time on Calvin Johnson look at the zone right there in the front that it vacated and it allowed Dunlop to get in there for a big game it's so important Reggie Ball at about five foot eight roll him out get him out of the pocket where he can see and you saw the heavyweight boxer Tom Zivikowski come up and finish off that play. Second and short. There's a look we'll see with Nix back in the shotgun a lot. Reggie's so mobile. There's that option look. And Choice slips. And they give up yardage that time. And Kirk, the Irish defense ready for that option look. They knew they have scouted Nix when he was a head coach in Division II. They knew that he was going to come with some option tonight. Well, they scouted Nix and they scouted Reggie Ball. They realized that the option on second and short is a good call. I'll tell you that number 18 in Dukeway has dropped 25 pounds in the offseason for Notre Dame to safety. He was there to make the play. He's a young man that in the Fiesta Bowl against Ohio State had a lot of those receivers running by him. He's committed in the offseason, and early in this game, he's been a factor. There's a big call now for Patrick Nix, who once was a quarterback at Auburn. Third down, they move the pocket hard to the left, fires incomplete, and Georgia Tech will be forced to punt. What you see there, Coach? I see again, rolling Reggie Ball out at five foot eight, give him a chance to see. But what I see right now in this punt situation, Georgia Tech with a new deep snapper in the game, number 50, Brett White, who has snapped two times in his college career, Brent. One of them went over the punter's head. So the deep snapper right now becomes an issue for me if I'm Georgia Tech. Durant Brooks will hope it's on target. He's standing back. Zibikowski, dangerous punt return man. 149 seconds back this summer. And he's waving everybody off. He's going to let this one go out of bounds. It actually took a pretty good Georgia Tech 
bounce. It was not a good punt, but it rolls out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. So we are scoreless. Each team has handled the ball. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Somebody's going to get their first loss here tonight. It's not going to be us, is it? No. No. We're down. That's a chance loss. Atlanta, and it's a beautiful night for football down here. And I don't think any major city in the country enjoys its college football any more than Atlanta, Georgia. And now it is Brady Quinn, who was 4 or 5 for not only 19 yards. But that big one was called back on a penalty. Second series, just inside the 20-yard line, snaps it off complete. Raymond McKnight's first catch, injured in the Michigan game a year ago. Come back, and Kirk, uh, what are the things we should be looking for here? Well, with Georgia Tech being such a, a team that loves to blitz, Notre Dame accounted 75% of the plays last year in defense for Georgia Tech were blitzes. They have to protect Brady Quinn, and if they protect Brady Quinn with protection, then downfield, you're going to see some big plays because Quinn to his receivers can generate those kind of plays. And the other thing is, when they're on defense, guys, they gave up their own their own defense gave up some huge plays in the past game. They've got to be able to get pressure on ball. Second down and one, and here comes Walker. From that little delay so well, they did it on their opening drive against Ohio State in the Fiesta Bowl. Joe Anawaii, the senior from Pensacola, Florida, makes the stop. And you look at Brady Quinn, two four-year starters in this game for both teams. And I think the difference for Notre Dame, they know they can win with Brady Quinn. Georgia Tech thinks they can win with Reggie Ball because of the consistency. But this guy right here, to me, is the picture of consistency. 30 Irish records he now holds. Unbelievable career. First down and 10 on the toss now to Walker, looking for daylight on a cutback. Crosses the 30-yard line. And that was Adam Oliver, the junior. Brady Quinn, you go back to the first two years that he started for Notre Dame when Tyrone Willingham was the head coach. He was battered around, beaten up, gained valuable experience. Last year with Charlie Weiss in the first year, had a phenomenal year, broke a lot of records for Notre Dame. That's why I think the expectations this year in his second year in the system are so high. That's why tonight I think people expect him to have a big game. But we have to give Ty a round of applause for recruiting him. Sure. Okay, we will oh, yeah. do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. He brought him in. Back and down and seven. Short drop. Fires incomplete. And uh, I'll tell you, Bob, I know you've seen Raymond McKnight many times working down on that sideline and watching him at practice in South Bend uh, as he came out on number six. There is number five right there. Uh, you know, I was really fascinated watching him. He's a big time receiver. Well, Raymond McKnight, Charlie Weiss told me on the phone, he will be a first round draft choice if he stays healthy. The thing Raymond McKnight has when he's hungry. He had to sit out last year and watch the success Jeff Samarja had with the injury. Uh, here comes third and seven now. A little bit too far in front of Samarja, and the Irish will punt again. You know, I'd say right now, he's he an open receiver here. Brady Quinn does not look comfortable right now, and I think it's because the variety of looks that Georgia Tech is giving him, he's not settling back in there and getting into rhythm in these first two series. And what I want to see, how does he handle the expectations? Everyone thinks he's going to handle it well, but think of all that's riding with Brady Quinn personally. No question, he's the cover boy of college football. Jeff Price will hit this one at about the 22. Big leg. Coach Price told us he could boom it, and he did that. Clark's got it inside the 10. Going to be well short of the 20 yard line. He's short of the 15 yard line. A terrific punt by Jeff Price from Hearst, Texas. A 69 yarder. And you're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC. Time to go back to the ESPNU City College Vault. Last season, the Charlie Weiss era began when Notre Dame traveled to Pittsburgh with a new look offense led by Darius Walker on the ground and Brady Quinn through the air. The Irish scored on five of their first six possessions, taking an early lead. Reggie Ball back in the gun, inside handoff, and here comes Choice. 
And you see Tashard Chorce, the transfer from Oklahoma. Great block by number 64, Andrew Gardner. And Brent, we saw this against Miami last year in Miami. Tashard Chorce with 120 yards rushing against Miami. A lot of it on those cutback kind of runs. Six touchdowns last year, 513 yards, and 11 yards for the first down. He will surprise the Irish here tonight. Now, they focus in on him as the game wears on. But he's better than they think. Out of bounds at 23. Bob Davey, what uh, should the fans at home watch for here? I think the first thing is Reggie Ball. How does Reggie Ball play? A lot of it has to do with does he throw the ball up to number 21, Calvin Johnson. But I think Reggie Ball, Kirk and I, both of us know him. He is so competitive. I think the thing he has to guard against is don't try to be Brady Quinn. Well, Brady Quinn's received so much hype. Oh, sure. It's not you against Brady Quinn tonight. Just stay within yourself. Don't force the ball. Second down and nine. Johnson working deep is going to catch his second ball of the night. Breaks out to the 35-yard line for a first and 10. And Kirk, some leaks are starting to spring in the Irish defense here on the last two plays. Well, this is the first time we've had a chance to see Calvin Johnson in the open field. Keep in mind when you see this move that he's 6'5", 238 pounds. And stop right there to get by the safety and then get upfield. This is where he, I think, has taken his game to the next level. No longer just using his body to make the catch up in the air. Now he adds that element of making people miss. Another first down. For the Ramblin' Wreck. Remember now, Reggie's a senior as he changes up, and now he calls a timeout. He saw the clock running down. Didn't want to take a penalty. It was interesting about Reggie that uh, he has not talked to the media here in Atlanta, and so us big deals from network TV, we come rolling in, figuring, oh, huh, <laughs> go get Reggie. <laughs> Guess what, folks? Not talking to anybody, Reggie. <laughs> oh, we'll get into that story right now. We've got a lot of things going on around the country. Let's go quickly to Matt Weiner for an update. Matt? Brent, I'm happy to speak to you anytime. Here's our vote for the Pontiac game changing performance of the day. Rutgers protecting a 21 10 lead at Chapel Hill. Fourth and goal, Ronnie McGill stuffed and stripped by William Beckford. Big Rutgers road win. Ray Rice had 201 yards rushing and three touchdowns to vote for your Pontiac game-changing performance. Just log on to ESPN.com and type in the keyword Pontiac. Uh, that is something Rutgers. I had them down in the inside bowl down in Arizona. They lost to Arizona State, basically a home game for the Sun Devils, but you could see then that Chiano was turning that Rutgers program around back. Let's go back to your story about Reggie Ball not talking to the media. If I thought anyone could break a young guy down and get him to talk to the media, I thought it would be you, but you had the no Wiley chance. I mean, he had luck, John. It was unbelievable. <laughs> First down and 10. Thrown low and incomplete to the other Johnson, James Johnson. He's a sophomore out of Florida. And he shows a little skill, too. He's a kind of a big physical guy, and uh, that ball, of course, uh, was nowhere close to him as uh, Coach Weiss is pacing that sideline over there. Certainly not happy about how things are unfolding. He came in here favored by a touchdown tonight, and you've read and heard all the hype surrounding this Notre Dame program. And here we've got four minutes in the first quarter and Georgia Tech going helmet to helmet with it. Second down now and here's Choice. Cutting back. <laughs> Mike Richardson, the uh, corner. You know, guys, talk, talking about Reggie Ball not meeting with you, I, I think a lot of that has to do with the scrutiny he's been under the last three years. Patrick Nix told me that that scrutiny has affected him. He said he has put more into this summer throwing the ball with the receivers, studying tape in this summer than he has the last three combined. Really, really focused on his senior year and being the kind of leader the Yellow Jackets need. He's got a shot of Nix up in the booth. That's where the two coordinators are. He's called this play. One-on-one -on -one sideline and over the head of Calvin Johnson. Probably has the best hands of any college receiver right now. I'm not, I'm not quite sure that he's the fastest. We'll wait for the combine 
I as a matter of fact, I know he cannot outrun Ted Ginn. I'm saying that no. right now that he cannot. But I'll tell you this: his him. receiver oh, coach, Buddy Geis, coached for two different NFL teams. Told me at practice Thursday he will run 4-4 four, four or better when he goes to the combine someday in Indianapolis. His own tell watch is sometimes a little different. He's also yeah. carrying 238 pounds <laughs> when he's running for 40 yards. <laughs> All right, Georgia Tech now back to punt again. Zivakowski for the Irish. This is low, but he's going to wave everybody off again and let it roll dead and out of bounds. Did not want to risk anything. Really. Down there, they want to be dangerous on the Brooks punt. And a reminder now, next week, Saturday night football features the rematch we've all been waiting for. Jim Trussell leads the top ranked Buckeyes into Austin to tango with Mac Brown's defending national champions. Last year's winner went all the way, as you know, that great game against USC. So see what happens this time around. Texas, Ohio State from Austin. It'll be ESPN College Football on ABC, 8 Eastern Time. And folks, that's just the start of a fun trip on Saturday night. Here comes Brady Quinn. Can he get it rolling here now? We check his stats. Five of eight, but only for 28 yards. The freshman, Maneer Prince, is in the backfield. They motioned him out. Firing underneath the cross in the tight end. A first down at the 30-yard line. Philip Wheeler with the stop. A time Brady Quinn showing great patience back in the pocket. One of the few times Georgia Tech not bringing a lot of pressure. And Notre Dame was able to hold themselves. You have stunts up front, but not a lot of pressure from the linebackers. Quinn sits in the pocket with enough time, and Carlson works his way back away from Wheeler to pick up a first down. Manier Prince, he's out of the St. Louis, Missouri area. He's got some quick folks. Watched him in practice. He dances, finds daylight. Zips it upfield. Quinn tried to go deep to Zamarja, who is well covered that time by their best corner, Kenny Scott. And a little bit surprised, Brent. You just said it. Kenny Scott, the only returning starter in the secondary for Georgia Tech. I thought if they're going to throw the ball deep to Jeff Samarja, put him on the other side and go against Pat Clark, number six, who was a wide receiver all last season, playing his first game on defense. But a heck of a job right there by Kenny Scott. One thing to keep in mind as Walker returns to the Irish backfield, the longer Georgia Tech stays in this game, the tougher it gets for the Irish. Had to throw it away, and uh, there was nobody there. Potential grounding. The flag is thrown by the referee. There was no question about it, was it? Intentional grounding. Number 10 on the offense. By rule, the ball is placed at the spot of the foul with a loss of down. Third down. And Joe Anawaii applying the heat right now. When we talk about Joe and Hawaii, interesting guy, number 96. His whole family are wrestlers, dad and uncle professional wrestlers, and great scouting by John Tanuda in the Georgia Tech defense. When it starts going bad, Charlie Weiss loves the screens, and they had that screen sniffed out. In fact, I'm talking to John Tanuda this week. He said, when I pressure, I know Charlie's going to go to the screen, and we're going to be ready for it early in this game. They had it. Now they've got Notre Dame in third and 27. From the goal line, Walker was a receiver in that area, and this one incomplete. But again, it was Philip Wheeler, the young man from Columbus, Georgia. And folks, you know Columbus, Georgia has been in the news down these ways. That's where that fine Little League team came out of. And Wheeler's all over. And look at 41. And you can see the speed of Wheeler. But looking ahead right now, if I'm Chan Gailey, I come after the punter right now. I try to block this punt. Keep in mind, it's Jeffrey Price's first game as the punter. The last one, he kicked 60 yards. Come after the punter right here for Georgia Tech. Pat Clark is going to be. At the very least, they're going to get great field position. And here it comes. Clark wants to take a couple of hops for Notre Dame, though. He's got to pick that ball up. It rolls all the way to the 26, but again, he did not want to risk a turnover, so it was probably a wise decision, and Jeff Price is showing us a leg. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. John? 
Brent, time now for the prime time of Pulse. While Cal and their national championship aspirations may be going down in the first week of the season, losing to Tennessee, Auburn, number four, struggling against Washington State, just 12 to seven. Brent, back to you. Hi, John, and here we have seen a 61 yard punt by Mr. Price. There's the fake toss. Reggie rolls hard to the left. He's got Johnson in the air, incomplete because of a devastating hit by Nduque. And you go back to the story Kirk talked about of Nduque in the Fiesta Bowl was beaten down the field by Ohio State. He loses 10 to 15 pounds. Watch him close on this ball. Great lick. Forcing that football out of there. Well, they they actually had two again, two defenders on Calvin Johnson. The ball was thrown where it had to be, but great recovery this time by Nduque. And as you said, Coach, a great hit, and the timing of the hit was perfect to take that ball away. I believe that's the first time I've ever seen Johnson fumble the ball when he had possession of it like that. I mean, Nduque really unloaded it. Second down and ten. And here comes Choice Daylight, and look what Georgia Tech has found. Out of bounds at the 41 yard line. 16 more yards. You're going to see Nate McManus right it now pull around on the little draw play right here. One thing I'm noticing here, guys, is that Georgia Tech's undersized on the offensive line, but they're incredibly athletic and agile. And right now, that quickness, they have Notre Dame off balance a little bit with the play calling from Patrick Nix and the athletic ability of this offensive line. Fires complete. And thrown out of bounds is Greg Smith, their number four. Minute and a half left here in the opening quarter and choice has rushed for 31 yards here in the opening quarter guys early in this game Patrick Nix deserves a gold star I know it's incredibly early imagine calling plays in the first I'll game give him a gold Charlie star Rice. if he doesn't run that option again right here on <laughs> second and one like he did last time well I don't think he's in the shotgun I think he's all right here second down at one they run the toss choice daylight slants it's a lot easier to call plays when you got a big time running back and think about this folks if Oklahoma comes into Georgia and recruits this young man right here to shard choice you know he's got talent and you get an excellent block by Mansfield Rado Brent number 68 downfield who's starting his first game at offensive tackle he was a defensive tackle last year but how about Oklahoma having Adrian Peterson and to shard choice at one point and with the injury to Adrian last year, Coach, he would have got a lot of carries out there in Norman. Now, Rashawn Grant will give him a blow. Number three from the gun. Option look. Here comes Grant. Had enough time on a spinner across the 35-yard line. Well, also working with this is Lisa Salters. And, uh, Lisa, I know we had a long conversation with Coach about giving up the play-calling responsibilities didn't we that's right Brent we asked him what part of his lesser responsibilities did he enjoy the most and he said I don't enjoy any of it in fact he says it's driving me crazy I haven't gone to any of the offensive meetings and I really wish that I could but it's for the betterment of the team I asked him right before kickoff I said coach how does this game feel any differently tonight and he said for lack of a better word I feel empty like I should be doing something but I know that the offense is in good hands I'm sure he's happy with the way things are going right now Brent? Lisa, thanks a lot. Johnson breaks free. In zone ahead. Pushed out of bounds. That was Tom Zivakowski saving the touchdown. Big number 21. And he gets Georgia a Tech great Whitney. block, Brent. In the open field by McNeil, number eight, the receiver. They chop the block in the strength of Calvin Johnson. Great job by Chris Dunlop downfield as well, picking up blocks. These receivers from Georgia Tech and the active offensive line, these guys are committed up right now. Choice is back as the running back. There's the fake. Johnson up in the air. Got a touchdown, Georgia Tech. Cannot stop number 21 on the fade when you throw the jump ball in the end zone. What a wide receiver. Travis 
Pell, who struggled a year ago after a brilliant freshman campaign, tacks it on with his new holder, Durant Brooks, the punter, putting it down. And let's take a look at this. What a fade receiver here, Bob. And Kirk, you and I are not surprised. We've seen this a lot. When they say he has a 45-inch vertical jump at six foot five, that makes it pretty simple. Throw the ball up in the air to Calvin Johnson, number 21. 6'5", with a 45-inch vertical and a corner that's 5'11", left out alone on an island. And Mike Richardson, very smart that time by Reggie Ball, just putting it up in the air to give his big guy room to go up and make the catch. And you know, when we had a conversation with him, and what impressed me, he doesn't like the hot dogs. Those are not his favorite receivers. He likes people like Marvin Harrison. He's very quiet. Has a very engaging smile, which you just saw there on the bench. Folks, he's all business, and he's going to be a big-time Sunday player. Brent, let's go back to Georgia Tech in kickoff coverage. Last year, they were 103rd in the nation in kickoff coverage. The first kickoff to open the football game. Notre Dame just about ran it back. This is a key area that Georgia Tech needs to improve in right now is covering this kickoff. Here's Grimes, wide receiver. Alley. Georgia Tech had trouble defending kickoffs last year, and here they come again. Grimes is out near midfield. Now, here is the overview. I want you each to take a breath here. Kirk, I'm going to start with you. What is happening in this game? Why has it gone early? for Georgia Tech and why is Notre Dame stumbling here as we watch a great replay of this, uh, this is this we'll see if they can capitalize on this second good return and that's just it they've not been able to get on track right now offensively because of the speed and athletic ability of John to his defense and on the other side of the ball give Georgia Tech a lot of credit for what they've been able to do with Patrick Nix to balance play calling mixing things up for the Yellow Jackets that's the first down play Slips it to McKnight. Bob? I think it's always a concern, Brent, when the expectations are so high. Keep in mind, Charlie Weiss is a grounded guy. He's going to preach to them all offseason. But when the expectations are that high, these young guys sometimes think it's going to be easy. It's not easy tonight. ESPN Saturday Night Football presented with uh, Kirk, Coach Davey, and I'm Brent. Nice to be with you tonight. Uh, Coach, what about this kickoff return uh, game and this coverage by Georgia Tech? Brent, one of the reasons Chan Daniel relinquished the play calling duties was he was going to be more involved in special teams because they had a huge problem last year in kickoff coverage. They have not alleviated that problem yet. There, yeah, they're using the fullback swap for the first time. Kirk, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about Brady Quinn, why he's struggling, and uh, what you think Charlie Weiss uh, should do. Here. I, I think he's struggling because they're not on track as an offense. This is an offense that averaged on the road last year over 500 yards a game. What we saw in the first quarter was that Darius Walker was not a factor. They've got to be able to get Darius Walker running the football with outside runs against all that pressure to set up play action and to get Brady Quinn in rhythm. Right now, he's not in rhythm, and he's rattled a, bit, a pit, which is very rare to see Brady Quinn rattle. But because of the kickoff return, he's got a chance, and he puts it in McKnight's hands, who is across the 40-yard line working against Pat Clark, the other cornerback. I think another reason Brady Quinn is a little bit rattled right now, we all have comfort zones, and one of the comfort zones for Notre Dame and Brady Quinn is the screen pass when things aren't going well and you're getting pressure, and Georgia Tech has taken away the screen pass right now. The screen pass and running the football. They're minus six right now for a quarter running the football. Swap is set ahead of Darius Walker in the eye. Behind the freshman. Walker picks his way. The 36-yard line. DJ Jones making the stop for Georgia Tech. When we talk about running the football, it's not as if they have to commit to that. It's just something to, to give this Georgia Tech defense something to be aware of. And Darius Walker, I think he's really what makes this Notre Dame offense go, is he is a nice compliment to Brady Quinn and his sophisticated passing game. Veteran offensive line. Harris, Santucci, Sullivan, Norton, and the freshman number 74. 
6 8. Right tackle Sam Young out of Coral Springs, Florida. Pulled down by Brady. Has plenty of time. And hits the running back with a pass for the first down. It'll be spotted back far enough to give the Irish another first down. So after the kickoff return, Notre Dame slowly marching down the field here. Pretty nice grab here by Brady Quinn just to be able to get the ball. And this is, again, where Walker can come in. It's not a huge play. It's enough of a variety to give the defense a different look and to be aware of little number three in the back of this backfield. And Charlie Weiss right now, things aren't going his way, but every play and every formation he is calculating and thinking about his next move. Keeping the tight end next to the freshman tackle. They're strong to that side of the formation. Going end zone, McKnight. Matt Clark had coverage. Receiver well overthrown, as you saw. One thing Charlie Weiss does not like is his quarterback getting hit. When we talk about blitzing linebackers, you're going to see number 41, Philip Wheeler. And they say Brent Philip Wheeler on defense is the Calvin Johnson of the Georgia Tech defense. He's that kind of athlete. Bob, we're seeing the same thing when we watch that Miami coaches tape. They're having a hard time identifying who they should block. That was a bit of a delayed blitz in the whole middle of that Irish line went over to the left side. Quickly to Samarja. Samarja wrestled out of bounds at the 23-yard line by Kenny Scott. Yeah, that's why Brady Quinn's not on track and not, not able to look uh, the way you'd expect him to look in the first quarter. Coach just touched on it. Even when he's not getting sacked, he's getting hit. And that's one thing that John Tenuta wanted to do. Facing a great quarterback, you've got to let him know that you're not going to let him sit back there and pick the defense apart. Make him aware of the pressure. And so far, that's what John Tenuta's been able to do. Five times in the last two years. Tenuta and this defense have upset 19. Third down here. Draw play. Picked up at the 25 by Philip Wheeler again. Number 41, the young man from Columbus, Georgia. A little bit surprised that on third down, Charlie Weiss took the ball off the line of scrimmage and ran the draw. This allowed the penetration of number 41, Philip Wheeler. Again, a side swap. The fullback misses the block, but when you take the ball off the line like that on a running play, you allow for penetration. So Carl Joya will attempt the field goal. Samarja holding for him. No good. The fans loving it here in Georgia. Chan Gailey and Georgia Tech leading 7-0, and they are controlling this football game as Notre Dame misses the field goal. In college football on ABC. 11.43 to go. 7 nothing Georgia Tech. And on first and 10, Reggie Ball with Rashawn Grant. Quarterback draw. We knew that was in the game plan to the 30-yard line. Well, it's time now for the Aflac trivia question. There's been talk about Brady Quinn. If he plays this year like he did last, he might be the first player drafted in the NFL. And so we thought, let's look it up. Who was the last Notre Dame player to be selected number one overall in the NFL draft. Think about it. Now, some of you Notre Dame experts, you're all over there, okay. right? Second down, coming up. Would you back in the gun again? Fire is complete. He may have juggled it. He's going to get a pretty good spot on this. As James Johnson, number 89. Looks like he got the first down spot there. And James Johnson, a key guy. Somebody has to take some of the pressure off Calvin Johnson, the other receiver. One thing to keep in mind right now, things are going good for Reggie Ball. His M.O., though, has been make the big mistake. So Reggie Ball, keep being consistent right now, Brent. I think key to this offense, obviously, for Georgia Tech. Calvin Johnson with four catches for 50 yards and one touchdown in this game on first down. They come back with Grant, the running back, to the 43-yard line. Let's take a look at the Pac Life game summary. And Georgia Tech leads it 7-0 right now. 
going downfield. Duke way. What a jarring hit that was. The ball comes out, but this time, folks, couldn't do it. Alley -oop. touchdown tech. Now second down and two. Reggie Ball leading. Brady Queen in pass yards and overthrows his number three man, Chris Dunlop, that time. And it'll be third down. What do you think about this series here, Brian? I think, again, right there is an indication. Don't know what the communication was, what the problem was, but Reggie Ball, can he be consistent and not create the negative play for his offense? They really wasted a call right there, Brent, on second down and two. But I like the fact they can run the football a little bit. Reggie, there was miscommunication. Reggie Ball ran out to Calvin Johnson and said, hey, let's get on the same page there. Definitely miscommunication between Ball and Johnson on second and short. Here's Grant. He's not going to run for it. Middle of the Irish defense. Stacked at Maurice Crum, who has been moved to middle linebacker this year. He's the junior from Riverview, Florida. His daddy played defense for the Hurricanes of Miami. Moe's a good one. Almost a wasted series there, in my mind. I, you, you look at what they did on second and then on third down. They didn't have the same intensity, the same attitude that they had in their previous series when they were the aggressor on offense. That time, they did not appear to be that way against this Notre Dame defense. Behind Brooks as Zipikowski awaits. He returned a couple for scores a year ago. There's a penalty flag as Zivakowski fields this one at the five, shakes a tackle, battles his way back, still standing, and he's finally down at the 23. As Zivakowski shows you the spirit of a heavyweight right there, but there is a penalty flag. The umpire and the referee are conferring right here. Dan Capron for the Big Ten, Jim Krogstad is his umpire. Again, kick coverage, a problem for Georgia Tech, Brent. There's his new special teams coach there, Bob. Another move he made to try to rectify the problem. We're going to hire Charles Kelly as his special teams coach. But a lot of field position, hidden yardage being squandered away in this game by Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech in 1983, conducted the final. Weiss trying to dig deep into his bag of tricks here. Over there with his two quarterbacks. If anything would happen to Brady, this is Evan Sharpley standing there. He'd come in. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC. Has an early lead over Arkansas. Well, right now, Auburn has gone to half, struggling a bit with Washington State, number four ranking. Brent, back to you. When you take a look at the total yardage in this game, Notre Dame with only 59 and Georgia Tech with 133. 9 11 to go. So the Georgia Tech defense taking charge of this football game. Brady Quinn's longest completion tonight is 12 yards, and that was to tight end John Carlson. The whiteouts have been bottled up. Their biggest play was called back because of a penalty. Quinn, Raymond McKnight dives for the ball incomplete. And you see Charlie White right now probing around, giving Georgia Tech different looks to try to find maybe a formation. That time, the empty formation with no backs that will base Georgia Tech up. But you see Georgia Tech moving every snap. That time, they didn't blitz, but they twisted the linebackers. But you feel the pressure of every snap defensively Georgia Tech's putting on Notre Dame. And I also feel the quarterback, Brady Quinn, step setting his fifth foot and then backing and backing and backing. Feeling constant pressure almost every time he drops back to throw. The previous play is being reviewed. Now, 
let's take a look. McKnight diving for the ball. Looks like the ball was on the grass underneath him, didn't it? It, it looked to me like the ground allowed him to control the football. What a great effort, though, by number five. Yeah, that will not be overturned. That is not indisputable video evidence. But what a great athletic play by Rima McKnight. And, and I must say that the official that I saw signaling incomplete was coming from that side right toward McKnight and the football. It doesn't seem likely to me that he was going to miss that one in that situation. Uh, but we'll, we'll let them sort it out down below. Now, this is not a replay challenge. Remember this year that the head coach may request the game be stopped and a play be reviewed. As we take a look at Chan Gailey, and I, I do want to make this point about, about Chan. We always talk about Charlie Weiss and the three Super Bowl rings that he won at New England. Did a great job there. Do not overlook the fact that his counterpart, Chan Gailey, has got major NFL experience. He was a play caller with the Pittsburgh Steelers when they went to the Super Bowl. Head coach down in Dallas, a play caller at Miami. Folks, he's been in some big time games. The pass was incomplete. The play stands as called on the field. Third. Greg, to your point, Chan Gailey not calling the offensive plays, not in the game plan meetings in offense. More time to spend with the defense and John Tenuta to help in game planning for the defense. And also the special teams. We saw him creeping over there in practice. Second down and ten now. Brady Glenn being forced out. Firing. And incomplete. Every time Brady Quinn has dropped back to throw the football, it, it's been the entire game. He has felt the intensity of his Georgia Tech defense. I'm talking almost every time, even when he's got him getting the throw off, he's feeling it. And what it's doing is it's making Brady Quinn aware of the rush. One of the things you have to avoid as a quarterback when you face a blitzing defense is to feel that pressure and, and be aware of it and not have your eyes downfield. And right now, he is not able to settle in that pocket and look over the defense and make a throw. All right, so here's your third down. Pressure and a penalty flag. You know, the point to make about John Tenuta and the game tape that he was looking at over and over was the Fiesta Bowl against Ohio State. And let us remember that Tenuta once was on the staff at Ohio State. Two people he knows very well, Jim Haycock and Luke Fickle, who run that defense for Jim Trussell. He told us that he was on the phone with both of them. And believe me, this is a very, very well-scouted Irish offense here tonight. There is John, graduate of Virginia. He's a football lifer, and he's done a great job. That Paul Duncan is now in for the true freshman Sam Young at right tackle. Tough game under fire against a man who likes to rush five on every play. And believe me, it's never the same five with his own blitzes of John Tenuta. On third down, here they come. Numbers. Brady steps up. Raymond McKnight, the intended target, battling in the air, juggled incomplete. Fourth down, the Irish are forced to punt. And terrific coverage by Jahi Word Daniels. Word Daniels comes in and plays the corner, and Clark took the slot receiver. Watch 32 go to work. And this is what we wanted to see. Notre Dame this time gets protection. The ball is launched down the field to remake tonight, and Jahi Ward Daniels, number 32, went up and made a play on that football. It might have been interference, but <laughs> might have been. I don't you know. It just looked to me like he was waking that helmet pretty good, didn't it? In the second look at Fourth down and 15. Here's Pat Clark now. Fields it at the 32. Slips the first gunner. Comes back on him. Carlson leads the assault. Met him head on to 35 yard line. So, folks, look what we've got here. 7 0 Georgia Tech. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC.
But Susie and I retire, we'll be taking trips like this whenever we want. It's a good thing we've been planning. At Pacific Life, giving you the right tools to help you meet your financial goals is what we're all about. As you look to the future, look to Pacific Life. Ask your financial professional about Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. Daniels, go get it. <laughs> Pepper who? I'm the salt. Let's go. I mean, let me take you through this thing. Look here. 85 on the left side, so everybody on the left really don't even matter. Who was 35? <laughs> <laughs> he jumping at. Hold up. Pause for the calls. Madden, NFL 2007. Ready to eat for everyone. EA Sports. It's in the game. I like these new Nacho Crunch grilled stuffed burritos. Those crunchy little tortilla strips in them. Kind of fun. Yeah, well, don't let Dave hear. You know, he always has to be the fun guy. Hey, guys, what's up? <laughs> what's that? Sounds crunchy. It's fun, isn't it? Taco Bell's new Nacho Crunch Grilled Stuffed Burrito. Carne asada steak, warm nacho cheese sauce, and crunchy tortilla strips wrapped up and grilled to go. For the burrito that's fun to crunch. Crunchy. <laughs> Think outside the bun. Please! This will all be over in five minutes. 52 hours ago, when you What happened in there? Were you afraid for your life? Were you afraid for your life? The Nine premieres Wednesday, October 4th, after the season premiere of Lost, only on ABC. We're welcoming you back to Avidad Stadium. Saturday Night Football presents Georgia Tech with the lead and the football. And uh, while we're away, Bob Davey made the point Georgia Tech can't be wasting series because you know the Irish are going to put it together sooner or later. And here comes Reggie on that quarterback draw. Zivakowski was there in the hole, and uh, Reggie keeps on battling. And uh, now it's time for the answer to the Aflac trivia quiz. Remember, we asked you who and when was the last Notre Dame player to be selected number one overall in the NFL draft. Folks, we're going to go back to 1972. The Buffalo Bills drafting Walt Potosky. Whose question was that? <laughs> yeah, baby. That's right. Yeah. That's your wheelhouse, right? <laughs> right there. <laughs> Gotta look at them, Kirk. I like right. those. <laughs> I'll give the Buckeyes one next week. I'll find one for them. Yep. Second Come down. Jimmy Stillwagon. <laughs> Jimmy Stillwagon. <laughs> the middle incomplete. And now it's third down. To me, Patrick Nix, the offensive coordinator, has to be pleased. He struggled a little bit. I think Colin Bray plays on second down and short. Again, I'm not sure about that call right there. But how about this guy? First game as offensive coordinator called into place. You get Notre Dame, who some people say is the number one team in the country, right in here in Atlanta. How long has he thought about this game? And he's going up against Charlie Weiss. Exactly. <laughs> and the Irish. And Charlie's trying another freshman, Darren Walls, number two, is on the corner. Left him on an island, and uh, Choice trying to barge for the first time. I don't think he well, got it, did he? It was going to be close. Let's see where he spotted. Anyway, Zibikowski again coming up to uh, to make the play. One of the things you're going to see with Patrick Nix with a 7-0 lead and a defense that's dominating. He said he learned as a head, young head coach at Henderson State, it's more about the team and not setting offensive records. And with a lead and with a defense playing the way they are, he's going to become probably a little bit more conservative trying to just keep that Notre Dame offense back, pinned back, and let the Georgia Tech defense try to hold this lead. One of our favorite personalities on the Notre Dame football team is Tom Zivikowski. Had a conversation with him Wednesday. He looked one way. Came out tonight, and uh, he visited the barber shop in South Bend before he came in here to Atlanta. And he wondered how Coach Weiss would look like. Wow. How about his yeah. summer job? What was it? A 42nd, 49. 49. For 25,000? 25 That's a G. pretty good summer job. That's better than working at a car dealership. <laughs> and I bet those Oklahoma fans would agree with that. That's a pretty good deal right there now. That's the truth, and it's all legal. Yeah. yeah. What was it again? 25,000? 25,000 he got. Five but you know, we asked him. Like his his we asked him if he wanted to fight afterwards. I've always thought he kind of wanted. He said, no, he wants to, he wants to take crack at, at football. He wants to go to the NFL. And you know, you watch him play safety, return punts. He'll get a crack. You know. oh, he's a good, tough hombre. You bet. But is he a fight promoter's dream oh. from the south side of Chicago? Tommy Zibikowski with the Mohawk stepping in, stepping in the ring. 
Long pass caught by Johnson to the 11 yard line. And they went to school against the freshman Darren Walls. So freshman Walls meets Calvin Johnson, and here's the result. One on one against a true freshman. There aren't many corners in all of college football that should be left alone with Calvin Johnson, and that time the freshman paid for it. And I'll tell you another thing, though, Kirk. Do not let Calvin Johnson down the field. You have to jam him at the line of scrimmage. When you let him have just a running start, nobody, I don't care if he's a freshman or a fifth year senior, is going to go up with Calvin Johnson. So hang on now. Left this alone is, down here at the bottom. This is a big series now in this game. We've got a first down. And the Irish jump all over to Shard Choice that time. Zipikowski was right there. Let's take a look now at Calvin Johnson. We featured him coming into this game. Big number 21. Five catches for 95 yards. 19 yards a carry. A catch and one TD. And keep in mind, in the bowl game, he only had two catches against Utah. Georgia Tech lost in their last game against Georgia last year. He only had two catches, and Georgia Tech lost. Get him the football. You would think they'd be looking for him. He's going to be in the left slot right now. And Dukeway goes over there to help out. That gives him a little more height if they're going to throw the alley-oop to him. Second down. Looking the other way, though. And overthrew the other Johnson that time. And he was covered by Lambert. Well, that's what Georgia Tech's going to have to prove, not only tonight, but this year, is if a defense is going to get down into the red zone and put deep, two defensive backs on Calvin Johnson and say, we've got to take him away, or well, James Johnson, or the scrambling of Reggie Ball, has to step up and become a factor here, especially inside the 20-yard line. Michael Matthews checks in as a tight end. Now they bring him down toward the bottom. He's matched against Lambert. He's a backup. He's a junior from Oxnard, California. And they're going to run choice, and the Irish are ready for it. I really have to wonder why they don't throw it. It's alley -oop again to 21. Well, I think, again, we agree with that. But if you go back to Patrick Nix and what he's trying to accomplish, he's trying, to, he's trying early in this game to get into field goal right in the middle to give himself a chance to try to get 10 points on the board. Hey, you have a 10-0 lead. I, I don't back, agree with I sat it. back and listened to the conversation. I don't either. Get it to 21. <laughs> no, Forget about sure. Henderson State when you were the head I'm coach. You, throw I'm it up you. in the yeah. air. Three straight <laughs> times down there. Throw it up to 21. A 30-yard field goal attempt by Travis Bell. Got it. <laughs> Trust me, 14 nothing is a lot different than 10 nothing against this offense. But Georgia Tech will take it right now, and they're dictating the football game. 4:45 to go in the first half. Texas, one touchdown run and three touchdown passes as they blow away North Texas. Meanwhile, Montana State Division One AA upsets Colorado. Corey Carpenter, 10 yards on Michael Jeffries here. Back to you. The best part of Notre Dame tonight, kickoff returns. 79 yards, and here they come again. Plenty of time in the first half, but looking again for something good to happen on the kickoff return. George West and David Grimes are back. And this one goes on through. So Georgia Tech survives. And ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC presented to you by Southwest Airlines. The low fare from here to there. It's on Southwest Airlines at Southwest.com. Chevrolet, America's brand. Chevy, an American revolution. Aflac, ask about it at work. And prescription Flomax. From the 20, Brady Quinn. And he's looking at a middle linebacker has caused him all kinds of trouble. Philip Wheeler trying to come at him again. Dances away. Still on his feet. And he steps out of bounds, but he was able to gain only one yard. You can see how the Irish have struggled with these possessions, Kirk. The entire first half. 
has been a mystery, I think, to all, anybody watching this offense. This offense returns virtually 11 starters. You lose, lose Maurice Stovall from last year, but you gain Raymond McKnight. 11 starters back, and right now a goose egg, almost a halftime, and they can't find any continuity. They don't have any continuity and any identity here in this first half. Quick pass to the tight end, Carlson. He's down at the 25, and this will be third and five. Kenny Scott. Down the corner makes another play, Bob. And if you had to say right now, what can Notre Dame do? What is Notre Dame having success with? Nothing. Right now, there's nothing they're doing that you feel you can continuously do against this Georgia Tech defense. And how about these stats? 11 for 20 with the number one Heisman Trophy candidate, number one draft choice in the NFL next year at quarterback. Samarja, here comes the corner blitz. Throws against it into the middle. I've got a first down with Carlson. Fine read by Brady Quinn as the corner was coming at him. Because I think he got away here. His right guard moved just a little bit to come down on that blitzing linebacker, K. Michael, K Michael Hall. But an outstanding, outstanding throw by Brady Quinn. I know it's a small little throw, a little hot route to the tight end. But guys, considering how much pressure he has felt, that's a great throw and a big first down. And the freshman Sam Young back on the field simply fanned on that block over there at right tackle. 14 yards, longest play of the game so far for the Irish. First down and 10 now. Here comes Walker searching for daylight to the 42-yard line. Got to go back all the way to 2004. The last time this Notre Dame offense was shut out for an entire half was Tyrone Willingham's last year, of course. They still have time here to get some points on the board, getting under three minutes. And with a lot of quarterbacks, I would say they'd be ready to unravel. But with Brady Quinn, that's not going to happen because this kid has seen it all in four years of Notre Dame. Let me Dame. update that stat. Notre Dame's lowest scoring under Charlie Weiss was 12 points against Washington last year. Second down and seven. Coming back to another tight end, Marcus Freeman. And let's check in with Matt Weiner. Matt. All right, Bill, let's get you a Taco Bell update from Oklahoma. It's been a tumultuous summer for the Sooners in the regular season, off to a bit of a rocky start. Down 17-14 after four turnovers, but Paul Thompson hits Adrian Peterson, who does the bulk of a 69-yard touchdown pitch and catch. It's now 21-17. Meanwhile, USC well off their 70-point pace up the line. Matt, thank you. And here it is 10-0, Georgia Tech upsetting Notre Dame. The Irish empty the backfield. Pressure in the middle. Throw back across it high. Overthrew McKnight. That ball might have been picked off as Pat Clark was coming. And the pressure was applied by Anna Wai again. And near the end of the game, folks will select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. To honor their determination, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Brady Quinn. I mean, here's one of the best quarterbacks in the country, and it just goes to show you that if you can get into the mind of a, even a great quarterback, that time, once he escaped the pressure, he had time to just set his feet, step and make a throw, but he's constantly has happy feet, moving his feet as he's trying to distribute the football. Tanuta said, throw him off his rhythm, and that's what he came to do, and that's what he's doing. Pressure is coming from all angles, crisscrossing the defensive line. Bob, this middle linebacker, Philip Wheeler, number 41, and Joe Anawai'i, 96, they're playing fabulous football. And the thing you see and you feel is the speed and the athleticism of this Georgia Tech defense, but every throw for Notre Dame is a quick throw right now. They have no confidence that they can protect and throw the football down the field. The crowd has been in this game since it began. And Notre Dame has not served up a reason for him to be quiet for one minute. Third and ten. Can't get an open receiver. So a fine run for Brady. 
to the 31 yard line at an Irish first down. Plenty of time now. 136. Plenty of time, but again, here, getting away from the pressure. And this is something that Brady Quinn, I think, doesn't have great speed, but enough. He gets to the outside, recognizes that he's got a huge pocket and enough to pick up a first down. Great awareness there by Brady Quinn. And again, the experience, not getting rattled, understands he has control of the clock, picks up a big first down. A 16 yard gain for Quinn. McKnight goes down to make the catch. So he has it at the 26 yard line. Time running 115. Weiss in a bit of a hurry up. And as a coach, you go back to his days with the New England Patriots in the NFL. That's the last time he's been shut out in the first half. Quinn juggled, should have been caught. Comes back after it and got it at the 20 yard line. A ricochet and tight end John Carlson went back and caught it. What a play. You know, there's so much talk about this offense not having Anthony Fasano. And talking to Brady Quinn, he said, I'll tell you, John Carlson can catch the football along with Marcus Freeman. And that time, great concentration. He got his hands underneath. And that is a catch, a big catch for the Irish. There's a timeout used by the Irish right here. We're just inside of one minute. So let's talk about the clock. Let's talk about what Brady Quinn and the Irish can do here. Coach, come in here and tell us what uh, what you might be able to do with 55 seconds left. A I think what you see, Notre Dame has made a couple plays here late in the first half. But think of the plays they've made. Brady Quinn scrambles when he gets third down pressure for 16 yards. You just make the little throw right there to Carlson. Nothing consistent that you can hang your hat on. But I think it's really important to get points here at the end of the first half just to have something to build on at halftime. In my opinion, when you're being dominated the way Notre Dame's been dominated, a little scramble to pick a first down. A tight end jumping over a defender off a deflected pass and catching it and picking up a first down. Little things like that sometimes can get a quarterback and an offense to find their rhythm, and all of a sudden they start distributing the ball and making big plays. It's almost like that batter who's just struggling at the plate and he gets a little bit of a, a ball to get right through between the third baseman and shortstop and all of a sudden he gets on a roll. And this crowd can help this Georgia Tech defense right now. Well, Tennessee was certainly helped against California today. First down and 10 for the Irish and jumping across the right side of the defense that time for Georgia Tech. Adam Oliver. That's going to be against Tech. Part of the stamp. Offside. Number 42 on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. You know, we talk about preparation for this game. Charlie Weiss practiced inside the indoor practice facility. Turned the humidity up for crowd noise. Charlie Weiss, Bon Jovi, and Bruce Springsteen trying to give them an idea of what this crowd noise would be like down here. New Jersey guy. That's a Jersey guy yeah, now. He's got to be Bon Jovi for crowd noise. Got to bring him. Practice. <laughs> First down and five yards after the penalty. Time. Samarja. Second down. You notice the amount of time that he had that time? That time, that time he's able to sit back in the pocket, look at the def defense. The play took a long time to develop, and actually the ball was thrown pretty well there. Kirk, one thing, when you're a blitzing defense and you blitz linebackers up the field so much, you get tired on defense. Sure. And right now Georgia Tech looks a little tired to me. Great opportunity for Notre Dame just to try to get something on the board here. Here's Walker. Straight ahead for a first down and goal. Keep an eye on that clock. It'll stop with the first down. This is first and goal now for the Irish. They have one timeout left. And if, if I'm Georgia Tech, I call timeout on defense because I think Georgia Tech is tired right now. Watch the arm tackling right there. Darius Walker almost scored. Use a timeout for your defense right now. Re-energize them from Georgia Tech. So this is the 13th play of this drive, so it's no wonder right now. Their hands are on their hips, and they're gassed. Kenny Scott takes Samarja. They're going to run to the left side. Not going to make it. We've got one timeout left. Clock running. Second down and goal. 
That's their last one now. So he's got second down and goal. All down at the five yard line. And a reminder now, tune in at halftime. We'll have John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie. Happy to have him aboard. They'll be in New York for scores and highlights of all the action around the country. Ohio State and Texas rolling and headed for Austin next Saturday night. That's our primetime game. ESPN, college football on ABC. What a schedule. They have put together for us. Week three, we'll be out in the Coliseum. We'll watch the USC Trojans of Pete Carroll take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers of Bill Callahan. And on we roll. Isn't it great to finally have the games, Kirk, that we could oh, look at? It's fun to watch college football starting Thursday, all day today. Tennessee, as you said, looked good. Now that you're down here at the five yard line, 16 seconds to go, nothing has gone well until this drive. You've got to get points. You cannot take a sack, obviously. Brady Quinn knows that. He'll throw it away if he has to against his blitzing defense. But I think if Samarge is not there, look for Walker or the tight end here on a seam route right behind the linebackers for a touchdown. Notre Dame with no timeouts. Backfield empty. Working with 16 seconds. Quarterback draw. Brady Quinn dives. Wow. End zone. Brady Quinn. That was a great call, but a risky call with no timeouts and Lock second and goal at the five. The half is over if he doesn't score. But a big, big drive say, for the Irish. Big drive, and because it worked, it's easy to say gutsy call and a great call to get seven points out of that drive. 14 plays. Huge, huge play. And a surprise. Joya tax on the extra point. Folks, we're going to have a whale of a second half here. That line. You go with the quarterback draw. He gets a great block from John Sullivan and the right guard. Bob Morton scores on the quarterback draw. Brady Quinn on this drive showing it's not just his arm. It's the second time he's had to use his feet. And I know John Tenuta, defensive coordinator, things have gone too well. For, for him to see his defense give up that big a drive, and that can change the momentum and complexion of this game on that series. And I'll tell you, when I look at Brady Quinn, if I had to say one word about Brady Quinn, it's courageous to me. Because I think back to when he started as a true freshman in a game against Purdue in West Lafayette when he was sacked 12 times. And I watched that game on television. I said, you know what? That kid will be a great player someday because he is courageous. I think you saw it on that drive. It wasn't just Purdue. I think those first two years, he was wow. battered. And I think that's when Charlie Weiss came to South Bend. The first thing he knew is he had a tough quarterback. Then he thought, let's see if he has the, the commitment. And then he realized that Brady Quinn had the physical tools and the commitment studying tape to be a very, very talented quarterback. That's what you saw last year. And I think in Brady Quinn's mind and in Charlie Weiss's mind, because of that experience last year, they expect him to take his game to the next level. Bobby Rinkus kicking off for the Irish. It'll be fielded at the two by Chris Dunlap, the wide receiver. And Chris well short of the 20-yard line as the first half runs out. Georgia Tech, though, has just held Charlie Weiss to his lowest first half production as head coach at Notre Dame. Remember, it had been 12 against Ty Willingham. Tonight, seven against Chan Gailey as the Irish head toward their locker room. And Georgia Tech having delighted this sellout crowd. 55,000 on hand here. Bobby Dodd Stadium. It's Saturday night. John Saunders, Greg James, and Doug Flutie are in New York. And let's go down below quickly to Lisa. Well, Coach, you got seven late. But Brady Quinn has not looked comfortable. What's going on with the quarterback? Well, obviously, we knew they were going to bring in a lot of fire zones, and w which is exactly what they've done. You know, we'll get our composure back right there. There was a couple times, a couple times he was under duress, and, you know, that's just the way it is right there. What adjustments do you make for the second half? Well, we may start to make the adjustments right now. You know, get the, ball, get the ball a little bit quicker, run the ball a little bit to mix it up right there, and have a little composure and finish off jobs. Thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck.
Trent. Hope to sustain there late in that first half. And I, I think if you're on defense, come after Reggie Ball. Reggie Ball is known as a, a quarterback that can turn the ball over. No turnovers in the first half. The other thing is it's more quick throws for Brady Quinn to get him on track again the way he finished on that last drive. And uh, Bob David, let's take a look at this now. Our Southwest Airlines playbook. Well, I think the first thing for Georgia Tech is going to jump out at you. The amount of penetration they had against the Notre Dame offense. The amount of pressure they had on Brady Quinn. I think it's really important in the second half that Georgia Tech maintains that kind of pressure. To do that, I think they need to alternate some players on defense and keep those guys fresh. But a great game plan against Brady Quinn. The Irish could not get the ball down the field in the passing game because there simply just wasn't enough time to do it. Rinkus kicks it off for Notre Dame to start the second half. And Grant will bring it out from three yards deep and short of the 20-yard line. And we check in with Lisa Salters. Lisa? Well, Brent, Chan Gailey just told me that he's pleased with the way his team is playing. He said we missed a few tackles there at the end. That caused the, uh, the the late seven points by Notre Dame. But he said at halftime, he told his team, look, we're playing well enough to be winning the game and to win this game on offense, but we're getting beat up on special teams. We've got to play smarter on both sides of the ball. Brent? Uh, Lisa, when you've uh, got time, we're going to talk about what happened to the United States basketball team. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa, of course, uh, one of our experts when it comes to the NBA and uh, the United States, still can't believe they lost to Greece. You know, but here it is. She played basketball at Penn State, point guard, too. She's a pretty good one now, Coach. There's a fake pitch by Reggie rolling hard. And it'll be second down. You know, on that Notre Dame touchdown drive that she mentioned and the chance at poor tackling, the Irish converted two big third down plays. One was the 14-yard pass to the tight end, and the other, Kirk, that 16-yard run by uh, Brady Quinn. Yeah, and I, and I think the run by Quinn, the scramble, really got the offense going. And it, it's just, a, again, a little thing that sometimes can spark the confidence of this Notre Dame offense. Second and ten for Georgia Tech. The deep ball straight back. No receiver open, and he takes off. And he is dangerous. Out of bounds, first down. There is no question the kind of ability Reggie Ball has. You see him right here. This is a pass play. Notre Dame, good pressure up the field. Reggie Ball turns it into a run, and the missed tackle in the open field right there by the linebacker, 47, Mitchell Thomas. But he's not the first guy that's missed Reggie Ball in the open field. No, but at the very least, you have to slow him down. I mean, Reggie Ball's very gifted in the open field, but Mitchell Thomas, get in the way, make him make a cut back to the inside where you have help. Here comes Trice. Picked up a couple of yards. Chris Frome, who's in the game, in on that play defensively for the Irish. Look at their first half possessions. You know the big thing I see on that? What you don't see is no turnovers by Georgia Tech. And that's been the history of Reggie Ball, a little bit of quarterback, is turning the football over. So it's kind of what you don't see on those stats. It's impressive to me. And that's why I think Notre Dame's going to apply the pressure here in the second half to try to create those turnovers that he's known for. Second down, he's going to take off again. He's well surrounded. And this will be third and long. You take a look at Calvin Johnson's numbers and what he's done here tonight. Five catches, 96 yards, and the uh, touchdown. And you just have to wonder why they're not making every effort imaginable to get the ball back in the hands of number 21. You've got to get the ball into his hands, you said, Bob, at the top of this broadcast. I'm going to make you a bet right now. He's going to get the ball thrown to him on this play. Here we go. Third down and seven. It's not that complicated. Reggie Ball goes in the huddle and says, Calvin, I'm throwing you the football on this play. That's how good Calvin Johnson is. He's got Wooden over there. Not even looking at him. They set the screen. 
Well, I should have taken that. I'd have had a free yeah. dinner. Yeah, that's unbelievable. I passed that up. That was gimme, folks. <laughs> Ambrose Wooden. It, the corner coming out. He didn't, wasn't even looking at it. Well, what's happening right now is Patrick Nix, the offensive coordinator, has a chart. And he's saying when they take two defensive backs and take Calvin Johnson away, we're going to go to, to Shard Choice. We're going to go to James Johnson. We're going to go to other receivers and other players on this offense that have to make a play. He needs to take the chart, wad it up, and put it in the trash can because 21 will make a play no matter how many defensive backs are on it. Bob, what did we see him do against Miami? He drove the corner off. That's all they would have had to do right there. <laughs> Brooks, like the punt. Here comes Zivakowski on a run-up now, looking for a seam. Hit the canvas at the 35-yard line. 10-7. Georgia Tech clinging to a three-point lead right now. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC. Check some of the adjustments and see what the guru, Coach Weiss, uh, likes to come up with here. There's a penalty against the Irish. We're just about, we're saying it to break there how huge a series this Fired is for Notre Dame. Full start. Number 76 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. That's Bob Morton, the right guard, and uh, you can see the first five possessions and what they did on that last one. But you go back to that last one, 14 plays, 80 yards, and a touchdown. You get it to 10 to 7. As miserable as things went in the first half, you hold Georgia Tech to three and out. You get the ball back. Momentum has changed. This possession pivotal for both teams. 30 yards of penalties against Notre Dame tonight. There's that quick drop. And here's Raymond McKnight up against a linebacker who slashed over there on him. That was Gary Guyton. Coming over out of bounds, so that short drop that against a fierce man. rush. Big mistake right here by Kenny Scott, the experienced corner right there. He comes inside, gives up contain, and allows Rima McKnight to the outside. Good block right there by Marcus Freeman, the tight end. Second down and seven. Toss play, Walker. First down, Notre Dame. Number three, Gary S. Walker on the carry. This is more like Notre Dame. You're going to take a good look here at the center. John Sullivan coming around. The All-American left tackle, Ryan Harris, coming around, getting upfield and giving their running back for one of the few times tonight a little bit of room to work with. But if you noticed here, Georgia Tech, not so much, they're not as aggressive as they were in the first half, pinning their ears back, and it's because right now Notre Dame's mixing it up, keeping them a little bit more on their heels. First down and 10. Walker to daylight again, first down. And the youngster who grew up right here in this area was recruited by Georgia and Georgia Tech. I like them to go to Notre Dame, running strong here. When a team moves a lot up front, you go to the outside zone and you just push them in whatever direction they want to go, and you put the ball into the hands of a, of a nifty running back who has great vision, who's elusive, and let him make the read and bounce off the blocks. A lot of movement, push them on his outside zone and let your back do the work. Now the fullback pounding away, swap. And I think we see here, Kirk and uh, Bob, I think you would both agree, obviously the Irish coaches have said, we're going to start pounding at him. We're going to start running at him. But I think the key is, can this guy right here, who was held to seven points in the first half, stay patient and keep doing this. If you're John Tenuta, you're a little bit concerned, but you don't mind this right now. Can Charlie Weiss stay patient and keep doing this? That's the question. Well, let's find out here on second and seven. A short drop, high percentage pass, but it was read well, and it's suddenly third and long as Pat Clark jumped all over that play and now on third and long uh, Kirk he's got to put it up and we've got uh, injury timeout here is uh, Darius is down well, it looked like the second defender who came in there came Michael Hall once Clark made the initial contact 
Hall came in to clean up wow. the play and just came in hard right at the right at right at the helmet of number three Walker right here. Boom. One thing Pat Clark, number six, needs to do is learn to keep his head up on defense. That's how you really get hurt. You see number six, Pat Clark, duck his head down. Now, well, Walker's being tended to there by the medical staff. Let's take a break. And you're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC. An air prince. And pass protection would be a huge question for a freshman. And they go empty anyway out of the backfield. Pressure. Green steps away from it. Fires for a first down. Rayma McKnight. Wow. Any question about Brady Quinn's arm strength? And think of the big plays in this game. Even though Brady Quinn has struggled, go back to the big third down when he scrambled for 16 yards in the first half. And how about right here? Thread the needle between Michael Hall and Jahari Ward Danish for the big first down to Raymond McKnight. Nice job, too, by the offensive line pushing that defensive line in to give him the time. You had a good picture of Darius Walker, who's back on the field and carrying. Battling to the 26 yard line. And now it'll be second down as Vance Walker seeing some playing time. Makes a stop. And again, the huge offensive line. Big size advantage over Georgia Tech's defensive line. Georgia Tech moving a lot up front. Fatigue on defense. If I'm a Georgia Tech coach or player right now, is my biggest concern. The Irish have a four minute edge in possession time, keeping this defense on the field. Here's Samaja. Turns it into a good gain and another Notre Dame first and ten inside the 20 yard line. There's the young man who signed a baseball contract with the Chicago Cubs. Jeff Samarja worked in the minor leagues. They said had he been willing to leave baseball somebody might have drafted him in the first round. They knew he was coming back to play football. That's actually a play that's designed and called as a run. But the relationship between the quarterback Quinn and the receiver Samarja, they checked to that on their own without the rest of the offense knowing it picked up the first down. They think Walker goes into him. Incomplete. Now we take a look at the Pacific Life game summer. Georgia Tech went out to a 10 point lead. And Calvin Johnson caught their touchdown pass and then set up their field goal before Brady Quinn's quarterback draw with the Irish on the board late in the first half. So with Kirk Herb Street, Bob Davey, and Lisa Salters, I'm Brett Musburger. Nice to have you along with us about 10. 25 here Eastern time second down and 10 Irish threatening fade corner out of bounds incomplete Pat Clark was the defender coming into this football game the one guy that I was concerned about the most for Georgia Tech secondary is this guy right here Pat Clark when you think about it it's really unbelievable he was a receiver last year cut several passes in the last game of the year down in Miami. Now he's starting at corner and I think really competing and you saw it on that play right there. Here's your third down. The fullback to protect. Dance is right. Can't find a man open. And he is punched out of bounds. That's a penalty. Philip Wheeler Draws the flag, and that is a huge penalty against the Georgia Tech defense. And Brent, I don't know if it's necessarily late, but it's helmet to helmet on Philip Wheeler. Came high on Brent Quinn. First down. 
And right here, you're going to see Philip Wheeler uses that helmet as a weapon and a blow to the head right there. That rule has always been a part of college football, really started to be reinforced last year. He did use that helmet as a weapon. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not throw objects on the field. You will be ejected. 7.57. In the third. First and goal from the eight. The toss to Walker, stretch to the left. There was a penalty flag, I believe the umpire threw it. by the umpire. He had it. Holding. Number 50 on the offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat. Peace down. Santucci. Left guard. So that ball is going to be brought back in the 17 and 18 yard line here. First down and goal still for Weiss and the Irish. Last their only touchdown in this game is a quarterback draw. And remember that Brady Quinn did not throw a touchdown pass against Ohio State in the Fiesta Bowl. That broke that string of 16 consecutive games. Draw play, Walker. Stop at the 15 yard line. I thought on this play, it looked like Darius Walker had a cutback possibility right there. It looked like he could have cut back and scored it out of there. That's pretty tight if it is. I'm glad I wasn't running the ball there. It closed. If there was a cutback, it closed pretty quick. This defense has changed their tune, and I think it goes back to the call a couple plays ago on Phillip Wheeler. Their energy is back. And goal drops it off. The screen is Walker. Touchdown. Penalty flag. Downfield blocking on the screen and penalty flag was thrown at the back of the end zone. Illegal block by the Irish. Tight end that time, John Carlson got downfield. He was actually in pretty Illegal good position. Block in the back. Number 89 on the offense. That penalty is assessed 10 yards from the spot of the foul, and we will repeat second down. Carlson was in very good position downfield on Roberson, a safety. As Walker catches the ball and starts to make some moves, he adjusts to Roberson. He's great right there, but right now, the ball carrier goes right by him, and that little push in the back was a great call by the official to bring that back. And they bring it back to the 13-yard line. Still second down, and goal, remember. Walker again spreading left looking for the angle got Scott on him dies for the pylon touchdown <laughs> Notre Dame leads for the first time this season guys this is exactly why Darius Walker is a perfect fit and a great compliment to Brady Quinn in the passing game the draws the screens this is Darius Walker in a nutshell. Keep in mind, he came back after sustaining the big hit to finish his drive off. Again, 14 plays and seven points for the Irish. Same as the last drive. That's two drives in a row, 14 plays for Notre Dame. People talk about Darius Walker not having great speed. He showed some great speed right there. We saw the referee coming across the field. He will check the replay and see if that ball crossed the plane of the goal line. But the speed of Darius Walker to break that ball out right outside. 
question, does he extend that football across the plane of the goal line? Tough angle right there to see it. I think that was the old coach getting the information before we did. The play stands as called on the field. Touchdown. I think Lee Corso got a preview there. You see that, Kirk? Yes, yeah, on down. Uh, Scooter's right in the middle of everything, isn't he? <laughs> Had the big hat on and free game. Now he's down there in the, getting in the way. There he is. All right, Scooter. The referee went right by him and said, uh, Lee, we've still got a touchdown. Lee said, tell Scooter to just, just back up. Tell him to stay back. So uh, the young man grew up in Georgia. Mom and dad moved up to South Bend. And it, when you take a look at the Notre Dame roster, they list his hometown, <laughs> South Bend, Indiana. The coach is from down here, and he's a good one. Joya adds the extra point. Brady Quinn and the Fighting Irish lead it by four. Corey Smith and Ted Ginn and the Buckeyes down in Austin, Texas, Saturday night. Here we have Notre Dame ahead for the first time. And that's their second straight 14 possession drive. And Grant will take a knee and it'll come out on the 20 yard line. Well, the season premiere of Gray's Anatomy is coming up on ABC Thursday, September 21st, 9, 8 Central. So make a move with TV's hottest doctors to a new season and a new night. That'll be Thursday night. And the dynamics of this game change right now drastically for Georgia Tech and particularly for their quarterback, Reggie Ball, because right now Notre Dame has the momentum. They have the lead. In the past, this is where Reggie Ball has tried to force it a little too much. Option on first down. And choice of running the The reason why you hear the crowd is they want a penalty called against Notre Dame on the sideline hit. But of course, when you saw and you heard that helmet to helmet collision, that was the reason why the penalty flag was thrown against Philip Wheeler on that play in the Notre Dame drive. So it's second down and seven. Got to got to think that Calvin Johnson's got to become a factor again for Georgia Tech. This time they're moving him around this time in the slot. They've got to get him the football to have any chance of moving the ball. Quarterback draw. First down, Georgia Tech. Your two playmakers for Georgia Tech, of course, Calvin Johnson to the outside, Reggie Ball with his arm, with his scrambling. We've seen Choice, the tailback involved. They've shown this, this offense can attack in more ways than just number 21, but they still need him to make the play. Moving hard to the right. Incomplete. He was trying to find Johnson. You know, the urgency that Georgia Tech played with, played with in the first half, they played it with that us against the world mentality. And ever since the Notre Dame touchdown to the end of the first half, the momentum, the emotion in the stadium has changed. They need a spark, they need something to happen to try to regain that momentum. You look at Chan Gailey over there. How patient is he going to be not calling the offensive plays this year after having turned that over to Patrick Nick? He's already put the headset on, and I would say he's offering some suggestions. Second down and 10. There it is to number 21. And just like that, it's a first down. The Duque was on him. It looks too easy, doesn't it? And it sounds too simple to say, look, just throw the football to number 21. Don't wait until he's in the NFL catching 100 balls a year and say, boy, I wish we would have taken better advantage of him if I'm at Georgia Tech. Throw him the ball. Well, that time Notre Dame brought Richardson from the nickelback on a blitz, and in Duke way, a safety left all by himself with Calvin Johnson. Nice presence there by the quarterback, Reggie Ball, to find his go-to guy in the one-on-one -on -one matchup. Here's Troy. To the 46 yard on first down. A promising drive starting here, by And you see the weapons of Georgia Tech at the key positions on offense quarterback, wide receiver, and running back. This is a talented, talented football team. That front, Victor, 
Bobby Amiri, Trevor Laws, Derek Landry, Ronald Talley. Remember down here, a little bit more humidity than what they're accustomed to in South Bend. It was 71% humidity when we started, 54% humidity, for example, up in South Bend this evening. Second down. Reggie got a lot of time and drills it. One thing I wanted to see coming into this game, what changes would Notre Dame's defense make over last year? One thing I do see, Charlie Staff, Charlie Weiss sent his staff to the New England Patriots, the Carolina Panthers, playing a lot of nickel five defensive backs in this game, something you didn't see a lot of last year. That's right now the biggest change I've seen. He also spent most of his time in the spring analyzing the weaknesses of that defense. Third down and one now, and... Choice trying to get the first down. Irish meet him in the hole. That was Maurice Crum, number 40, who was at the point of attack. It's a good job by this defense here on third and short. And you consider where we are in this game right now, 14 to 10, and the way Notre Dame's been able to drive the length of the field, two straight drives. Okay. Chan down. Daly going for it. I go for it. Momentum yep. of this football game has definitely changed. I would go for it right here. And the punt, number 39, right Jan plays it conservatively. It's been pretty much his M.O. as a coach. Zipikowski back. And they'll let it come in the end zone. It'll come out on the 20-yard line. Exactly what they didn't want to happen for Georgia Tech. Last two drives from Notre Dame have changed everything about this football game. They had 54 yards of total offense before that last drive when Quinn took it in, when they decided to take a chance and run Quinn in without any timeouts. They score before the half. They get the ball back after stopping Georgia Tech. Again, 14 plays, and Darius Walker goes into the end zone. Two touchdowns on the last two drives. They get the football back. The feel and the energy of the, on the field right now definitely in favor of the Irish. First down and 10 for Notre Dame, leading at 14-10. Toss play with Darius Walker stretching left. And a nice run as he's tripped up by Philip Wheeler. And you really feel the rushing game, particularly with Darius Walker right now starting to assert itself for Notre Dame. No question, Kirk, huge series right now for Georgia Tech defense. And it's standing around again. And that's why I say I would have gone for it on yeah. fourth down because you sense the momentum has switched, look, look obviously, at him, in this game. Look at him waiting around, waiting for the offense to break the huddle. A little bit of a, again, of a different look out of them compared to that energy they played with in the first half. Second down, here comes the toss. Here's Darius. Wheeler and his friends are there to meet it. Michael by number 35, K. Michael Hall. So Philip Wheeler, number 41, and K. Michael Hall, number 35, have been two very, very busy linebackers here tonight. And right now, if you're Georgia Tech, your energy level's down a little bit, momentum's gone to the Irish. But stop and think of the big picture. It's 14-10 against the number two ranked team in the country. You're in great shape. Step up and keep playing. Well, here's third and one. Swap the fullback ahead of Darius Walker. There's Swap banging for the first down. So Philip Wheeler, who made the stop from Columbus, Georgia, folks, and at halftime, the Little League champions from that town. I think it's about 70 miles. Picked pick any of the pressure on Brady Cody Walker. And that gang, weren't they a delight at Williamsport? And there's the coach. Oh, and and any of your research, or any, the package. The they package. just did a great job and drew a huge ovation uh, from the fans. They'll be over at uh, at Athens. They're going to throw out the uh, first pitch when the dogs open their baseball season next spring. Here's a long pass for Raymond McKnight. McKnight got it. 21 yard line. Just looking long ball of the night by number 10. Back to me, my number six, Matt Clark. 
This is the matchup that Brady Quinn has looked for. Pat Clark, the former wide receiver against Raymond McKnight. This is what McKnight will bring to the offense this year for Notre Dame. Ball underthrown, great adjustment by McKnight to come back, high point the ball, locate the ball, and go up and make the catch. You lose Maurice Stoball from last year, you regain Rima McKnight, who, by the way, led this team in receiving in 03 and 04 before the ACL last year. 44 more yards. 185 throwing by Brady Quinn tonight. Darius Walker battling for a tough yard at that time. And right now, through the Georgia Tech defense, let this third quarter run out, regroup, and try to hold Notre Dame to a field goal in this situation. So the final seconds will tick away here on the third quarter. Notre Dame taking a lead for the first time tonight after the intermission as Charlie Weiss makes adjustments and runs the ball more than he did in the first half. So Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines returns after this message and a word from our eighth quarter. And welcome everybody back to Dr. Pepper's College Football Kickoff Weekend on ABC. The Irish with a second down. Here's Walker. Dances in the middle inside the 20. This is going to be third and a big play coming up for this Georgia Tech defense. I tell you Bobby, what, you made the point. They'd love to get him into a field goal situation. No question, here. Brent. Hold him to a field goal. How about this move right here by Darius Walker? Right there. Uh, beats Philip Willer. They had penetration in the backfield just to get that back to the line of scrimmage. But huge play right here on third and seven. Darius Walker's off. The freshman, number 25, the tailback in motion. Rayma McKnight drops it inside the 10-yard line, and that brings up a field goal situation. And that is all the Georgia Tech could ask for. And he just said, come on, Ray. As he comes off the field, you can read Coach Weiss's lips. Now, remember, Joya missed a 42-yarder back in the second quarter. This is a 36-yarder. Samarja the holder. Missed again. It's a four-point game. And I'll tell you what, go back to the drop by Raymond McKnight on third down, a sure first down. Huge, huge break for Georgia Tech right here. I don't know if I'd want to be that kicker walking over to the sideline right now. He's missed from 42. He's missed from 36. Georgia Tech still in the thick of it. Here in the second half, Georgia Tech with two possessions has only 45 net yards. Reggie Ball pulls out on first and 10. And throws it away. He was dancing around. And it is time for us to take a look at the Pack Life game summary here tonight. Calvin Johnson, the talented wide receiver for Georgia Tech, has caught seven balls for 111 yards and one touchdown. Darius Walker has carried 17 times for 72 yards and one touchdown. And Brady Quinn, 21 of 36 for 185. Ball dances. To the 24, Mike Richardson is there, and uh, suddenly it's uh, it's third down, and uh, about five for uh, for Georgia Tech, coach. And I tell you, Brent, we need to talk a little bit about this Notre Dame defense, a defense that was really maligned last year, gave up 396 yards a game, the worst in school history. Really played solid here tonight. Noel Richardson, a freshman from Georgia, in that defensive line now, number 53. So we've seen a handful of the talented newcomers. Under pressure, Reggie throws it, diving 
<laughs> wow, what a catch by number 21. Johnson's hands, folks, are unbelievable. See if they're going to take another look at this, but watch Richardson hold his jersey still. He still breaks away because of his strength and reaches out to make a catch. They're, Georgia Tech trying to hurry to get to the line to get the snap off before they review it, but lays out, and he's done this his entire career. Look at his hands. Oh, are you kidding Look me? at how strong his hands are to make that catch. Officials do want to stop the action. Georgia Tech not able to get the ball snap quick enough. There was football hitting the grass here, folks. Take a look at this now. Did he have total control of it? I think they're going to rule that an incomplete pass. I think it'll be a huge turning point in this football game as well because it would be fourth down if they overturn this call. But I do think the ground helped him gain possession of that football. You agree, Kurt? I, I think that when he came down with all his momentum, the angle that we just saw there, it looks like it, it definitely did. It looks like his body pushed it out of his hands. But, he, you know, he's done this his whole career. And for his size, to think about having that kind of hang time and control of your body, think about the catch that he made. Was it against North Carolina State? Big catch against Miami. I think the size of his hands and the strength of his hands and the ability to lay out is just really what makes him so special. It was a third and five play. Remember. So let's go back to last year. Let's take a look at number 21. This is where you get a chance to see what he can do when he's in the air. This is this is the thing when he came in naturally. He had these kind of abilities to go up. Look at I mean, to see a man that size being able to adjust in midair and make a catch like that is just amazing. You know the amazing thing we talked to him never really played basketball. Played some basketball as a young guy, but the first thing when you see him, you kind of envision him on that basketball court sure. with that body control. They are taking their time on this one. It is such a huge play. So let me, in case you weren't with us, it's a Big Ten officiating crew, but the replay booth is being manned by ACC officials here in Atlanta. And again, the buzzword, indisputable video evidence to overturn the call. It was ruled a completion. So might give it to him just for the effort. Boy. <laughs> just how pretty it was. I was thinking the exact same thing. Bumblebees look like they're losing interest a little bit. She knows what's on the line right here. She realized it would be fourth and five and have to punt that football back to Notre Dame. Rubbing the beads there. I want to remind you now, this is just the start of ESPN College Football on ABC. Let's listen now. After review, there is indisputable video evidence that the pass hit the ground and was incomplete. Fourth down, five yards to go. A huge break in this game. We're going to remember this, Bob, as you said, 12.56 to go in this game, down four, a first down potentially. And this will be a play you'll go back and look at and remember. You're the Georgia Tech defense. Forget about all of that right now. Go out and get a stop against the Notre Dame offense. And it was clearly a first down, and now it'll be fourth and five. Brooks trots onto the field. Zivikowski the return down, man five. for the Irish. And Zibikowski, an outstanding return man, in my opinion. Trying to get Notre Dame. Good field position here. Still 12.56 for many. Fine punt fielded at the 22, up the middle. Penalty flag is thrown. Zibikowski is tripped up, but there is a penalty back at the 28-yard line. So it's, this one's coming back. Yeah. Gonna Illegal get block. Sergio Brown here, just a little over anxious, trying to block Chris Dunlop. The return. Illegal, Illegal block, block in the back. Number 31 on the receiving team. That penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul. 
First down. He's, he's trying to get down there, but Dunlop beat him to the spot, pushed him in the back, and takes that return away. So we'll take a break, and when we come back, you'll be looking at Brady Quinn and the Irish offense. After 11 o'clock Eastern time with Kirk Street and Bob Davey, I'm Brad Musburger. Notre Dame has come from behind to take a lead 14-10. 12 and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. This is Darius Walker, the tailback for the Fighting Irish. They trailed in total yardage for most of the first half, but now they have taken an edge. 280 yards of offense here tonight for Notre Dame and 238 for Georgia Tech. And Georgia Tech's offense has been bottled up most of the second half. It is the Irish defense that is winning tonight. And Reggie Ball still has plenty of time to work with if his defense can get the ball back in his hands. High and incomplete. It'll be third down for the Irish. Penalty flag. This will be the 13th penalty of the night. Against the Irish. Came late and it's going to come on Jeff Samarja. Personal foul. Leg whip. Number 68 on the oh, offense. Yeah. That penalty is enforced half the distance goal. Repeat second down. That is the tackle, Ryan Harris. He's an outstanding left tackle. This entire offensive line has had their hands full here tonight. Harris, Santucci, Sullivan, Morton, and the freshman Sam Young. Now second and 17 for Brady Quinn and the Irish. Sounds a little bit different here than Bon Jovi or Bruce Springsteen in that crowd <laughs> yeah. Charlie tried to set up back in South Bend, doesn't it? Samarja the target. What a grab! What a grab by number 83 at the 48-yard line. Well, Jeff Samarja, guys, we've talked so much about Calvin Johnson. Jeff Samarja is going to be a first-round draft choice as well in the NFL draft. Amazing ability to go up and adjust to the ball in the air. The ball is thrown to his outside shoulder. He finds the ball against the Georgia Tech corner, Kenny Scott, and makes a great catch over his left shoulder. But if you're a Georgia Tech fan, Offensive you want offensive passing, passing yeah, a little bit of a right push there. there. Bump Better. right there on yep. Kenny Scott. They've been kind of letting him go on both sides tonight. 42 yards. Maybe the best two receivers in the country yep. Top in two. this game in Top Calvary two. Johnson and Jeff Samarja. Travis Thomas is in that running back for the first time tonight. Remember, he has played linebacker on a weak side. Cut back. He was switched from running back to linebacker in the spring when Coach Weiss wanted more speed on the defense, but they still list him as the tailback behind Darius Walker and ahead of the freshman, Maneer Prince. And now for the first time tonight, we are seeing 26 on the offensive side of the ball. Brent, let's go back to something you, you brought up last night in our meeting about the heat and humidity. Playing in the South for a team from up in the North, pretty impressive to see Travis Thomas taking majority of snaps on the defensive side of the ball and then coming in and giving him a change of pace with his speed at tailback. You got that right. Second and five. And this will be third and a couple. Let's check in with Lisa. Well, Brent, we asked Charlie Weiss about the decision to move Travis Thomas from running back to defense. And he says it's the New England Patriots way, a la Troy Brown. We moved him to the secondary. But when he asked Travis Thomas, Thomas was at first confused. He said, Coach, I don't think you respect me as a running back. And Weiss said it has nothing to do with respect. I want you in on a lot more plays. Right back to you. Exactly, they say, and he found a pretty good uh, pass receiving extra tight end, a linebacker by the name of Vrabel on that Patriot team, too. Third down now for the Irish. Walker back in. Won't get it. It's fourth down again. A great stand, and it was number 41, Philip Wheeler. 
Again, great penetration by the Georgia Tech defense. Watch at the top of the screen. Come Michael Hall, the linebacker, just bounces that football outside. Key stop on third down right there. Again, the penetration forces the ball outside, and the inside linebacker, Phillip Wheeler, cleans it up over the top. Jeff Price with the big leg. Pat Clark back deep. 9-15. Come out on the 20 yard line. Georgia Tech gets it back. 8.57 to go, and you're watching. All right, John, and here it's 14 10, and the Ramblin' Rook takes it over now with 8.52 to go, trailing by four. There's a quarterback draw again. Reggie Ball to daylight, and a first down at the 39 yard line. Predetermined quarterback draw. Excellent block right there by number 68, Mansfield Rado. Maybe the quickest running back on the field right here, Reggie Ball, Georgia Tech's quarterback. So a little bit of the no huddle as they bring him out quickly after that 18 yard run. Starting to see if the Irish might be just a touch tired. They'll try to keep it in the air. And they do. This is James Johnson, number 89. No relation to Calvin. This is standing room only, folks. You cannot believe the demand for tickets down here. And uh, it, it looks like, uh, well, Wrigley Field on a busy day. It's <laughs> so cozy down here. Fans are packed in. Some Notre Dame fans even bought Georgia Tech season tickets. Just so they could get a ducket for this one. Second down and four. Quick flip now to Grant. The spinning move. First down. Sean Grant from Tampa, Florida. 5'10 junior. And there is a flag on the far side that I didn't see. Chan Gailey, who did not wear the headset early on in this game, went to it. Illegal shift. Two men moving at the snap on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat second down. Big penalty. Had a first down across midfield. Now this is going to take the ball back around the 38-yard line. Kirk, when you look out on this field, both teams right now gassed, tired, that's what it is in the first football game of the year on a hot human night. This will be a gut check, courage check coming down to the end here because both these football teams are tired right now. Well, not to mention the, the emotions that take it out of you as well. It's been a lot of adrenaline rushes for both teams. We'll see who wants it more. Down Calvin stretch. Johnson is slotted over to the right. The quarterback draw. Here comes Reggie again. First down, breaks the daylight and crosses the 45-yard line. <laughs> This is where Reggie Paul, we've seen him on this drive, have a chance to show what he can do. And again, I think Notre Dame is so aware of the outside threat to the passing game that they're completely being surprised by Reggie Ball and his speed. Great double team that time by the big tight end Matthews and the guard McManus to take the linebacker out of the picture and give Reggie Ball some running room. 74 yards and nine carries running for Reggie. He's thrown for another 140. Straight back trying to get at him and he throws it away. And I think you see the maturity of a four year starter at quarterback and the development of Reggie Ball right there, Kirk. This is about the time of the game in a critical situation when we've seen Reggie Ball force the issue. That time he just, the play was covered on the screen and he threw the ball into the ground, didn't risk the turnover. And that's, uh, as you said, that's what's gotten him into trouble Second in the past down. when he's turned the football over, made poor decisions because he has so much confidence in his ability that he always thinks he can make the play. Second down and 10. Lowe picks it up, buried at midfield. Running over him is Travis Thomas, the two-way player here tonight. And, uh, that's that speed. The coach Weiss wanted that linebacking spot. You can watch him close after the bad snap. Well, I was going to say, Brent, the poor snap took the 
the rhythm and the timing away. And Elvis, by the time he picked the ball up, the speed of Thomas already in the backfield. Now it's third and long for Reggie Ball. Do you think number 21, Calvin Johnson? That ought to be the number one discussion as that offensive football team, Brent, comes over to the sidelines right here. You would think. Georgia Tech uses its first timeout here. And we will check in with John Saunders in New York. Brent for the Sports Center in. Uh, John, we will check in on USC in two weeks. They will be hosting Nebraska out of the Coliseum. Next week, of course, ESPN football on ABC will pack up the trucks and the circus will move to Austin, Texas. Game day will be there to start everything off. And we'll continue with John Saunders' pregame show in the afternoon on ABC. And we'll bring you the rematch between Texas and Ohio State at 8 Eastern time. A game that Vince Young pulled out in the fourth quarter in Columbus. And that sent the Longhorns on their way to a national championship, one of the great games of the season a year ago. Isn't it exciting? Adds to the excitement after today's performance by Texas and Colt McCoy at Ohio State and Troy Smith. Adds even more anticipation after both these teams look so good this afternoon. Talk about pageant street in college football. The Ohio State Buckeyes going down to Austin. Talk about football tradition rich states. Ohio and Texas. I heard Ohio State's packing 30,000 fans, and Texas is giving them 5,000 tickets down in their stadium. What they should do is close off a street down there, put up two huge big screen TVs like they did in Germany at the World Cup, invite all the visitors to come in. You got them surrounded, sell them a few adult beverages, and they'll have a good old time. Trust me. Here we go now. Third down, ladies and gentlemen, at 15. 628. They'll bring the action to you. In trouble. Going down. The Irish defense with Maurice Crum, number 40, leading the assault that time. The last two plays, Notre Dame decided to instead, instead of sitting back, Rick Minner decided to bring pressure. And that was a good call. Even though it's third and long, instead of dropping back with seven or eight, they decide to bring Crum from the outside, bring some linebackers, and try to force Reggie Ball to make a play. And close at the end of this play, if the whistle blow, late hit right there on the quarterback. Very close right there. It's been a personal foul on Notre Dame. From behind Brooks, the punter. Zivakowski back inside the 10. Swings free and they clean up on him at the five yard line. Dangerous, dangerous field position coming up for Brady Quinn and Notre Dame clinging to a four point lead. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on again on ABC. A dandy in Atlanta. 14-10 now, and the Irish are backed up inside the five-yard line. The toss to Darius Walker. Got daylight. Raina McKnight comes back to help him get downfield, and a huge, huge run for the young man whose family is over there in the stands tonight with the Irish fans. 19 yards, and Darius Walker's helped carry the load here. Tech, I am impressed with Darius Walker, how tough he is. I can see now why he broke Herschel Walker's all-time touchdown record in the state of Georgia. 47 touchdowns, three state champions in his chips in the state of Georgia. This kid, to me, is the difference in this football game, Brent, right here. Darius Walker in the second half. Yeah, and that play right there is as big as it gets right now. The clock is running, 447. Keeping the clock moving, Darius out to the 28-yard line. Hall with the stop, checking the timeouts. Notre Dame with all three, Georgia Tech with two. We talked at the beginning of the broadcast about the importance of Darius Walker, a veteran. He's been around, and as I said, 
his characteristics and his mind are a perfect fit. When you talk to Charlie Weiss, he says, you know, he's a lot like Kevin Falk when I was with the Patriots because he can catch the ball, he's great in pass protection, and he gets you tough yards because of his vision and his leg strength. And we're seeing that this entire second half. On second and six, the draw. First down, bolts free, and a holding call is going to bring this one back. Flag thrown back on the 31-yard line. Ryan Harris, the tackle, was one of the blockers. <laughs> he, tack <laughs> he tackled his guy. The tackle made a great tackle here. I think it's going to be Ryan Harris oh, on the back of Kamichael. Number 68 on the offense. That 10-yard penalty is enforced from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. This is an obvious call right here. Watch the left tackle, number 68. Ryan Harris, Kamichael Hall, the linebacker. Get him a defense. How big was that penalty? And right now on the Georgia Tech side, they've got to be thinking about how to get the ball into the hands of Calvin Johnson if they can get it back. Second down. Now the clock is down to 3.30. They desperately have to have it back. Thomas is a running back here for the Irish. Draw play. Thomas to the 25. If I'm Charlie Weiss, I'm If you know Charlie Weiss, you know he's an aggressive play caller. It'd be shocking if he does not decide to throw the football to pick up this first step. Great blocking job. Beautiful Arima McKnight. What a job by the offensive line. Tanuna brought pressure, and it was picked up gorgeously by that veteran offensive front that time. 19 yards. They brought the pressure this time right up the middle. They have time to throw, and Rima McKnight in a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. You have to win that battle on the outside. He's able to do it and pick up the first down. And what you see, Kirk, for the first time tonight, Georgia Tech played man-to-man -man coverage. Jahi Ward Daniels, number 32, doesn't play a lot of man, could not contain Raymond McKnight. First down and 10. Thomas stays in as the Irish running back. They've got the clock down to 212 now. And now at midfield, twice and 10. And I am somewhat surprised now that Georgia Tech yeah, we've got it stopped here. Now they've got one. One of the pressures on Chan Gailey when he gave up play calling was some of the criticism over time management that fell on his shoulders up here. And, uh, Bob, you know how hard that is for a head coach uh, to manage and be the offensive coordinator and still run the overall show it can be very very difficult and as a coach it's your worst nightmare to be tagged as someone that has four, four clock management it goes back to the georgia game in 2004 when they had problems at the end of the game well oh, we've got a moment let's take a look at the espnu all state standings review folks and uh, take a look buckeyes roll texas 56 points auburn wins West Virginia, a lot of folks like them. There's USC. I think all six of those teams received first place votes in the AP rankings this week. Then you've got Florida, 34-7. Southern Miss gave a battle very, very early. So there you have it. Next week, the big ones in Austin, Texas. You know, Troy Smith expected to perform well, and he got off to a good start today. First quarter alone, he was hitting all of his receivers. But how about Colt McCoy? The pressure on this young man to step in for Vince Young looked very good, in command, and a much stronger arm than I anticipated in watching him today against North Texas. Georgia Tech is down to one timeout. 2 3 
Toss play with Thomas. And so the linebacker battles his way. Here's Coach Weiss not wanting to uh, risk a, perhaps a fumble with a freshman running back. So uh, Thomas giving Walker a blow here late in the game. So there is their last timeout. That third and nine call, deciding to be aggressive and go for it. That's what I love about Charlie Weiss as a play caller. He decides to go for it, has confidence in his offensive line to protect, and Brady Quinn and Raymond McKnight execute it. And now he's in a position, if he picks up this first down, the game is over. And one thing that really helped Raymond McKnight, Jeff Samarja played baseball this summer. He was gone all summer to Boise. Raymond McKnight became the go-to guy, having all that time with Brady Quinn in all those summer workouts. Of course, uh, over on ESPN, if you missed any of today's games, the Sports Center will have a full recap over there. And uh, here on ABC, I imagine most of your stations are waiting to bring you the local news uh, from our affiliates. So that's still ahead of us here tonight. We're down inside of two minutes. We've got a third down. The hour is 7 of 15. Looking to salt this one away, but it wasn't easy. And the month of September doesn't get any easier. Penn State, Michigan, in South Bend, up to East Lansing to Michigan State, back home Purdue. It's brutal. And the Irish have a target on them right now. And Thomas Twisting did not get it. Thomas on the very Georgia Tech with no timeouts, but how amazing and maybe the most critical play in the game. You hand the ball to a tailback who started the game, Brent, as a linebacker. That's really an amazing story. Amazing story and a great play by K. Michael Hall to save Georgia Tech and give them a chance potentially if they can come up with another stop here. How about Charlie Weiss? This has to be tried to draw yeah. Georgia yeah. Tech off sides. Do not yeah. jump off sides. You never know here. Yeah. Gonna let the clock run down. We'll take it. We'll take the penalty here. He's got Price with the big leg. There's no question what he was going to do. They didn't quite get it set up right. Charge timeout. Notre Dame. And he got the timeout. And I didn't think he got it for a moment, but he did. It's never over with number 21, Calvin Johnson, as a wide receiver for Georgia Tech. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Rather interesting because if you look at that picture, he's going to go for it. Kirk, uh, go ahead. He, uh, earlier this week, I talked to Charlie Weiss about his nature to go for it, being aggressive. He said, We did a study in the NFL. He said, You know, the two guys that were in the top three this last year Bill Belichick, number one, and going for it, and Bill Parcells, number three, and going for it on fourth and one. Travis Thomas is his running back. That is no easy yard there, too, as you look down and put over the top. <laughs> Boys, I'm going to tell you something. That third and nine call, electing to throw the ball, and then going for it on fourth and one. That's why players that he recruits want to play for Charlie Weiss. The aggressive nature of the play calling, not only the scheme, but the aggressive nature. Of this game now is over. I tell you, though, if he doesn't make it, you can talk about all the aggressive play calling you want. In my opinion, Georgia Tech hasn't really made a first down this whole second half. And if you turn that football over right there at the 45-yard line, you may never live that one down. <laughs> well, they still, they still got to score a touchdown, which has been hard for them to do. And so are Chevrolet MVPs. And a recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Darius Walker, 117 total yards. And Calvin Johnson, 111 receiving yards. And one TD, and even though he had a brilliant evening, you're left asking yourself, why didn't he get the ball even more? Right, Coach? That is exactly right. Second down now, and Notre Dame, and I think the way the headline, how about survives? Anybody think of a better headline than that? Perfect. You know the headline? One. In the end, all that matters is the W. This was a tough, hard fought win for Notre Dame tonight. 14 10, our final score. Notre Dame trailed 
throughout the first half. They were down by 10 points. And you must say that Coach Minter's Irish defense stood up here tonight and made some big plays. And a couple of youngsters from Georgia.